Maya disappeared from her small village in Nepal when she was 15. Her family didn't know what had happened to her until she returned nine years later, almost unrecognizable from the trauma and abuse she had endured. Like many, Maya had been sold to a trafficker. She was taken to Mumbai and only released when her health was so poor she could no longer work. And when she returned, she was shunned for being unclean. Human traffickers use deceptive and coercive recruitment tactics and are skilled at identifying and exploiting vulnerabilities. Those living in extreme poverty with few if any support systems are easy targets. By making false promises about a better future, stable work, a good education, and a means to support loved ones, traffickers trick their victims into becoming almost eager recruits. These victims are then forced into horrific situations with little hope of escape. Today, the International Labor Organization estimates that over 40 million people are victims of human trafficking. 25 million of these victims, including over 6 million children, are engaged in forced labor, producing goods and services for global consumers. The United States Department of Labor reports that over 148 goods, like cotton, sugar, and gold, that are used to make millions of items sold right here in our country are produced with child and forced labor. The abuse spans several industries from agriculture, mining, and manufacturing. Think coffee, chocolate, fish, cattle, bricks, carpets, clothing, jewelry, fireworks, fake flowers, goods made to order for cheap corporate swag. And because our supply chains are global, as consumers, we have what's called a slavery footprint. That can feel heavy, I know. But I'm here to tell you that we are not powerless. We can do something to affect change. Not by giving money to aid organizations, though I do have encourage that, of course, but by our purchases. My wake-up call, my point of no return around this issue, came when I took a trip to Nepal with the organization Bridge to Nepal. Among the young people I met, I noticed a sharp paradox between despair and blind optimism. These young people had experienced the struggle of subsistence living, yet also seen the promise of wealth, education, and leisure. So it wasn't surprising, given the lack of opportunities, that like Maya, some of these young people were falling victim to human trafficking. Because of my experience in Nepal, I could not turn away from the urgency and immense need for resources to address and bring an end to human trafficking. So when I returned to New Hampshire, I co-founded the Freedom Cafe, a nonprofit cafe with a mission to end human trafficking by creating a space to engage our community in conscious consuming and practice what we preach. And even though we started out with the goal of being intentional about our product sourcing, our coffee, our sugar, our compostable to-go cups, we didn't fully grasp the power of our regular wholesale purchases to directly address the root causes of human trafficking. Let me try to explain that power. Consumer spending is a massive force in our U.S. economy, making up about two-thirds of our total gross domestic product. In 2018, American consumers spent over $4 trillion on food, clothing, recreation, and home furnishings. 
Think about your household budget. The average American household donates about $1,800 a year while spending about $17,000 a year. So imagine the impact if our $17,000, our collective $4 trillion, went to items that were sourced by certified, transparent, and responsible companies, small farms, cooperatives, and artisan producers. As conscious consumers, we invest in the well-being of our neighbors around the globe and build economic stability among often vulnerable communities. At the Freedom Cafe, it's been incredible to see the impact of five years of putting into practice conscious consuming as a social business. To see the way our purchases have directly supported families, allowed children to attend school, women to gain leadership skills and leadership and management positions, and new families to join farming cooperatives. Because here's the thing, families whose basic needs are met do not need to entertain the manipulative recruiting offers of human traffickers. When we acknowledge our connection to producers locally and around the globe and gradually shift our buying habits one product at a time, we can directly address many of the root causes of all forms of human trafficking, eliminate vulnerabilities, and prevent individuals from making choices out of desperation. This is what it means to commit to the practice of being a conscious consumer. And all of us can invest in this change every day through what we purchase. Consumer pressure has already impacted many industries. Leading up to the 200-year anniversary of the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade in 2007, grassroots organizers in the United Kingdom began to raise awareness of forced labor in the chocolate supply chain and encourage consumers to buy traffic-free chocolate. So at the time, and to this day, few chocolate companies are able to trace the origin of their full cocoa supply chain. However, market pressure has led to change. Nestle can now trace the origin of 49% of its chocolate back to the farms where it was grown. And as of 2015, 100% of the chocolate that Nestle sells in the United Kingdom has been made with 100% third-party certified traffic-free cocoa beans. And here's where we come in, because perhaps when consumers in the United States also demand consciously sourced chocolate, companies like Nestle will find the motivation to invest in stronger practices of traceability, transparency, and accountability, and ensure that 100% of the chocolate they sell in the United States is also free from forced labor and child labor. So where to begin? I started with chocolate. You might start by asking where your t-shirt or jeans come from, or your coffee or jewelry. Learn the stories behind the companies you buy from. Do they talk about product sourcing on their websites? As more companies begin to shift their priorities, they're often proud to share their progress with their customers. If it's unclear, ask. If you don't like what they're doing, don't give them your money. See, companies are market-driven, and we, the market, need to demand change. <laughs> Together, we can take steps to end human trafficking and shrink our slavery footprint one conscious purchase at a time. Thank you. Thank you, Brian.
I'm guessing a lot of folks in the audience are curious how to start their own journey on sourcing goods traffic free. I was hoping you could share with all of us, what are some early resources that got you started? Yeah, I get, really, at this point, resources are much more readily available than when I got started on the journey. And I would recommend checking out Good On You. They begin to tell a lot of the stories of the companies and, and products that you might buy. And another organization or a web resource called Rank a Brand gives a very clear, transparent uh, list of a rubric for sustainability and human rights that helps you to make informed decisions as a consumer. And I would be remiss um, to not say that that our own website, thefreedomcafe.org, has a really, uh, a really great introduction for conscious consumers. Wonderful. Thank Thanks, you, Brian. Everyone.